In today's video, I'm just going to show you some quick short term solutions to hold up your car roof lining. These are the ones that we usually see customers use majority of the time. So these are just cheap temporary solutions in order to hold the roof lining fabric up out of your way so it's not obstructing view to the traffic and the road. One of the most common quick fixes we see customers do is where they just add glue to the fabric. We don't usually suggest that's the best method for a short term solution because it just looks nasty. The glue usually seeps through the material. You can see this glue stain and sometimes it can actually damage the board or just make more work for us when we actually do the full repair. So what usually happens and what makes these car roof lining sag is over time the foam backing on the material starts to get old and crumbly, it turns orange usually and it just detaches itself from the headlining material. It starts to turn to like that orangey type of sand dirt type of um, substrate and yeah, spraying glue to that is just really not going to work. The best method I've seen customers use is just a handheld staple or just an office stapler and fire a few staples into the board. That's quite easy for us to just remove when we do the recovery stage, so that's why I do suggest the staples. So you just grab yourself an office stapler or just a handheld one. I wouldn't suggest using anything air powered like through a compressor. It may have too much power to it and you may dent the board itself. And then when you grab your choice of staples, usually I just suggest something like an industrial staple and keep it quite shallow as well because the only problem I can see with adding staples would be that sometimes underneath your headlining board itself you might have the wiring harness that goes to all your interior lights stuck to the headlining board itself and then sometimes for the rear windshield you might have that hose that runs from the squirter bottle to clean your windshield it might be running out the back as well and that could be stuck to the headlining board also a possibility there may potentially be the hoses nearby where if you have a sunroof the collection of water or moisture around the sunroof has those hoses for the drain drainage for it they may potentially be nearby as well so there is a small possibility that using staples in the middle of your roof lining may potentially hit the wiring harness itself or the puncture that hose um, but yeah very minimal chance of that happening another method i've seen customers use is drawing pins And once again, the problem that I might see with these is they don't anchor in that well into the headlining board. And they may, with the, just a vibration of being on the road, they may just loosen and fall out on your seats. And then, yeah, you accidentally might sit on them or they just be on the floor in your car. So, but they're, you know, sometimes you can get quite long um, drawing pins. Another thing, once again, it may potentially hit any wires behind the headlining board or any water hoses that are draining the you know the, from the seals around the sunroof or anything like that so there are risk in doing um this type of method but you know i've never seen it hit any wires or anything like that but i guess it's, it's a possibility isn't it really i do suggest pretty much the only solution to get these sagging roof linings fixed is to replace with brand new material so another method that we've seen customers use is just double-sided carpet tape. What a great idea this one was. So they just basically would have peeled back that material, cleaned off anything that's like, you know, that orange foam that's kind of like just sitting there all, all yucky and you just brush that off so you've got a clean surface to stick that strip to. And uh, yeah, you just it's quite um, good to, for the front and the rear of the headlinings. And they just stuck it there and then basically all you do is you just stick the material down on it and it gets a nice clean surface so yeah that's a pretty good idea so um, I reckon that would be easy to remove during the recovery stage as well so it shouldn't give us uh, trimmers and upholsterers too much of an issue to remove that one and there you go it just holds it up nice and neat so there's a great solution guys I would suggest some carpet tape maybe just double-sided tape carpet tape uh, another option we've seen guys use is this one's actually a pretty good idea. It's like just a glue stick because once again, you're going to be cleaning the headlining board slightly to get that orange foam off so you've got a clean surface to apply. And because this is not a thick compound of glue, just adding a tiny bit to the back of the material and the board itself, it's not going to give too much drama. It's not going to seep through the material, but it may just be enough to hold the material up just to get you back on the road and nice and safe while you're driving around. I'm not sure how long the glue would last on a glue stick because it's not high temperature, but you know, it's pretty good just in the short term. Keep it in your center console and just apply it when needed. Now, so another method is a upholstery twist pin. Now this one's a pretty good idea because it's they don't go too deep, they're quite shallow. 
but they're going to be anchored in there quite well because you give them a gentle twist and they'll just stay in the roof lining until you're ready to take them out and then you twist them back out again. Now we'll just go into um, what happens when sometimes you do add glue and this is why I like through like an aerosol can or anything adhesive base, cement glues and all those type of things. So it can actually bring up the headlining board as you remove the material because it's not designed for headlinings and you're spraying it on like the old foam and it just might cement itself to the board so when us upholsterers and trimmers go to recover the job we go to remove the material and it might start to bring up the board with it and you can see it leaves a nasty effect sometimes it's just it gets all yucky and nasty you got to get there with a sander and brush it all down because normally the foam will just come off quite easily just with a straw brush and um, yeah just a very time consuming process this one here looks like it may have been like a slastic um, sealant kind of type of glue or compound that they've used to try to hold the roof lining up so definitely not ideal it doesn't work and it's just going to create more work for us in the long term and can also damage the board or leave imperfections in the recovery stage an option to hide any imperfections could possibly be you recover the headlining board once and if there is any imperfections you could recover it a second time you're going to run into like more glue and more fabric of course but that's one way to keep with the original board if there is damage from someone adding glue otherwise you may just need to replace the headlining board to get a clean finish so another method i've seen used is like using duct tapes or sticky tape so while this does work quite well sometimes when the car warms up the glue compound on the uh, duct tape itself can kind of like come off and then just stain your plastics and then you're going to need some sort of um, cleaner product to actually uh, try to remove all that residue back off so i'd suggest to stay away from the duct tape and the sticky tape on your plastics to hold up the roof lining because um, yeah when the car does warm up you're running the risk that all that adhesive on the back of the tape is just going to seep off and stain your plastics and then when you try to clean your plastics you may use the wrong product and it might take the ink out of the plastics and yeah just destroy your plastics itself on windshields you probably could get away with just removing the residue from the tape with maybe a solvent or a citrus type of cleaner so once again guys i do suggest to not add any of the uh, adhesives and the glues to your roof lining underneath the fabric when it starts to sag in the attempts to hold the material up because it doesn't work and this is what we're usually left with when we do the recovery stage we've got a bunch of like all that glue compound to just remove the orbital sander and like i said before not all headlinings can withstand a bit of sanding or it just may be a difficult process to try to get it nice and flat and clean ready for the material to go over because when the brand new material goes over the finish only looks as good as the board underneath the material itself so uh, if there is a um you know bumps and lumps and stuff still left over most of it does come out as the car warms up because the foam and the fabric kind of expand like the new fabric has been added and when it's been installed in the car just yeah after a few warm days it will just settle and give off a cleaner finish and most imperfections on the material just swell out and you can't see them at all or you can re always go through the process of recovering the job a second time and the second layer of foam and material will hide most imperfections so in summary guys i do suggest to use the staples at the front or the rear of the headlining if it's sagging from the front or rear and you can also use the double-sided carpet tape as well as a method of holding your car roof lining up because adding glue is just a method of like disaster really because look at all this dried up compound that someone's added it's like it almost looks like a putty like a body filler and um yeah i got like a quite a coarse sander on there i think it's 40 grit or 60 grit and it's um yeah it's not really removing it at all so i think with this one we ended up letting the customer know the situation and then we either recovered it twice or just got a new board but this is what usually we do see so this is where the headlining board can get cleaned everywhere but then at the front and the rear because someone's added their own glue that's the part that requires a lot of attention and you're just going to bring out the orbital sander and try to get that edge nice and flat to get a smooth finish when we go to recover it because when that uh, foam goes all orange and crumbly it can be brushed off quite easily usually that's why you can see in the middle uh, section of this whole board it's all gone like that white finish and then right at the end you've still got that orange because the glue has just cemented all that old 
crumbly foam to the board and it's gone all like really hard and tacky and it's um, even like sticky and gooey so when you're sanding along it's not really budging at all it's just kind of like molding and moving shape and it's like really annoying to get rid of and you could probably use some sort of solvent or a type of product to try to maybe break down the glue maybe but then I don't want to hinder the glue the new glue that gets added like with any oils or solvents underneath the board that may just prevent the new material from getting stuck and and um, cemented to the board properly so this is all completed so we've done this plenty of times we know how to get a good clean finish so as you can see here that was that same board and we've got a nice clean finish and um, yeah that's just uh, basically involving a lot of sanding to get it all nice and smooth uh, apply some brand new material stretch it in some areas just to give it a nice sharp finish over the edge and then maybe even possibly leave it out in the sun just to give that um, let the fabric kind of settle and just expand and hide any imperfections so yeah here's another job that we did on site and um, yeah pulled the roof lining out of the car got it on the trestles pulled off the old material and then we were welcomed with all this gunk to get rid of on the headlining board so um, we've sanded down the rest of the headlining board and then we just got this um, sticky gluey compound where the customer or the previous customer owners of the car has added some glue so we'll bring out the orbital sand and we'll try to sand down this headlining board to try to bring it down to a nice clean finish but it's quite hard and some of it's also quite tacky as well so it's going to be really difficult to remove and this is that job recovered once after we sanded it down you can see slight imperfections in the material itself so you can see where those border and those outlines are of the glue that's been added and we weren't quite happy with this we knew this was going to um, probably stay there anyway long term so we went ahead and added n another whole layer of foam and material to try to hide this um, all those imperfections so here it is recovered the second time and you can see it's a huge difference it's actually hiding a lot of imperfections and um, that's pretty much off the bat recovered a second time so we still have a few more tactics and methods to remove more imperfections once it's reinstalled back in the car. So I already touched space on a few methods of um, basically just install it in your car, leave the car for a few warm days, just forget about it and then when those warm days come along it will just give off a cleaner finish and will settle in. Other, or you can just run the heaters in your car as well to change maybe the foam cells will slightly um, you know expand and just give off a cleaner finish. Or there is a method of using an upholstery skewer and with that you can gently penetrate the foam or the fabric from beneath the fabric itself and just like kind of like shape the finish so you can pull out imperfections and dents and little creases and stuff like that but you want to try to not pull the material itself um, accidentally where you pull like the stitching out so because then you'll make a mark there so it's almost like um, it's one of those things that just come with practice so you're better off just trying out and maybe um, you know in a small section or an off cut of material just to get the um, for the feel of what you've got to actually do there but really it's just poking through the material itself and then trying to play around with the foam backing underneath the material itself so yeah and that brings us to the end of the video guys if you're finding this content helpful make sure you give this video a thumbs up click that subscribe button if you want to help our channel grow and we'll see you on the next video catch ya